Hey, have you heard the latest news about Miss Anderson? Miss Anderson? Oh, I remember her. What happened to her? Well, I heard she opened her own general store. Really? Isn't it nice? Huh? Are you serious? What? She always looks so dull. She wears clothes that you don't even know when they were made. I can't believe someone that poor could have her own grocery store. I don't think she has that kind of money. It's really strange. I think she must have earned the money in a nasty way. Clementine, please listen to me. Miss Anderson has been talking about opening her own store since several years ago. She even volunteered to come up with some ideas for souvenirs at local events. It seems that she really loves merchandise. My husband and I sent flowers to congratulate her the other day. Flowers? Why did you do that? It's a waste of money. I don't think so. My husband and I just wanted to congratulate her. You don't have to give her flowers because her shop is going to go out of business soon anyway. What a stupid way to spend money. You shouldn't talk like that, Clementine. Miss Anderson has made her dream come true, and that's great. Natalie, you really don't know anything about the real world, do you? Look at the reality. Most of the time, people who force themselves to start their own business end up in the red and have a hard time making ends meet. Unless the person has a great business talent, it's not easy to survive in the competition with other shop owners. Miss Anderson doesn't have that kind of talent, no matter how you look at it. She's just a dull person. Dreams should only come true for those who are able to see the reality. I'm afraid I must disagree with you. In my opinion, everyone has a chance to make their dreams come true. Jeez, that's so like you. I really can't stand your bubbly and naive personality. How long are you going to act like a little girl? I'm not acting like a little girl. You think so? Robert told me that you haven't given up your dream to become a baker. You're just like Miss Anderson. Now I understand why you didn't quit your job at the bakery. I wonder if you are planning to open your own bakery. Yes, it's been my dream since I was a child. I've always dreamed of owning my own bakery and I'll never give up. There it is. Childhood dream. I know you love romantic and dreamy things, but you should have stopped that when you entered high school. You're already 30 years old, aren't you? You should be ashamed of yourself by now. It's time for a reality call, Natalie. Why do you think it's embarrassing for people to chase their dream? Your life will be enriched by having dreams, right? What a lame excuse. You should learn from Robert. After all, the best job is a permanent job at the office, which most people don't complain about. Robert is a banker, and that's a decent job. It's everyone's dream job, right? I'm proud of him. I can show off about how great my son is to the neighbors too. Show off, huh? Indeed, what Robert does to make a living is admirable. He's serious and steady. I can understand why you are so proud of him, but that's a different case. You're wrong. You don't seem to notice anything. What do you mean by that? This is a very serious matter. Let me be honest with you now. I think you're a disgrace to our family. Disgrace? I really wanted Robert to marry someone else instead of you. You see, there's a woman named Kelly who lives near our house. She's a senior banker at Robert's workplace. Yes, I know her. Kelly has been nice to me. She's young and beautiful, so I thought she'd be a perfect match for my son. No way. It's true that Kelly is a wonderful woman. But you agreed when I got married to your son, didn't you? That was only because Robert insisted. I just don't want him to hate me, so I decided to grant his wish. Oh no. Because you guys started dating right after you met each other at your junior high school reunion. I thought both of you would break up soon. Are you telling me you agreed to our marriage on the assumption that we'll soon get divorced? That's horrible. 
Your way of thinking is just too old-fashioned, Natalie. In this day and age, divorce is a common thing. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I also thought that Robert should have a little fun. I can't believe you just said that. This is just too much to bear. I hope you don't get me wrong. I'm saying this is for your sake too. You should find your next partner before you turn into an old hag. Who knows, maybe you'll meet your Prince Charming. Well, you won't be able to move on if you're still talking sweetly about dreams anyway. I'm sorry to interrupt you in the middle of your conversation, Clementine. But I have to go now, so please, excuse me. Yeah, whatever. You'll be working at the bakery anyway, right? Good luck with your flower-covered work. Natalie, are you okay? Florence just called me and said that you were involved in an accident. Sorry, Robert. I'm still in North Carolina now. I apologize for worrying you while you're at work. What are you talking about? Never mind about that. I'm on my way there as fast as I can. Anyway, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling better. The doctor said that there's no life-threatening injuries, but... What is it? I hurt my cheek. It might leave a scar. What? A scar on your face? Yeah. Fifteen stitches is a pretty serious injury, isn't it? My face looks horrible. I'm sorry, Robert. But it's not life-threatening, right? No, it's not. Then I'm really relieved. I'll probably arrive at the hospital in less than two hours. I'll be there during visiting hours. Thanks. And my mom's coming too, so I'll take her with me. What? Your mother? Yeah, she's worried about you. I'll pick her up at the station. Okay then. I'll wait for you both. Is there anything else you need? Don't hesitate to tell me. No, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Take a good rest, okay? I'll see you later. Thank you for coming to visit me, Clementine. But you left so quickly. You seem to be in a great hurry. What happened? It's nothing. I was just trying to restrain myself from laughing out loud. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry for leaving so soon, but it was too hard to hold back my laughter. What's so funny about me? Can you just tell me? I can't believe the only thing you're proud of turned out to be like that. You really look just like Frankenstein. Frankenstein? You're not even attractive enough as a woman now. Poor thing. That's enough. How dare you say such a thing? Even though you are my mother-in-law, there are things you can say and things you can't. Like I said before, I'm not ashamed of this injury. You don't have to act tough. I know that you're in shock. You've just lost the only thing you can be proud of. I'm well aware that you hate me, but I have no intention of divorcing Robert. Even if you don't have that intention, have you ever considered about how Robert feels? What? Did you notice the look on his face when he saw you? He was so shocked. His own wife is now a Frankenstein. It can't be helped. Well... He didn't say anything like that. He must have realized that you're not attractive as a woman. Gosh. I won't say anything bad about it, but I think you should give up on Robert already. You are not a good match for him. It's better for Robert to be together with a beautiful woman who has a decent job like Kelly. That's not true. I'll never divorce Robert. You're so persistent. I hate that part of you too. No one wants an ugly woman like you. Get out of the house immediately. I don't want to see your ugly face. Shut up, you stupid old hag. What did you say? You're such a jerk. I can't believe that you've been saying horrible things like that to Natalie when I wasn't looking. You're a wife beater, aren't you? Is that you, Robert? That's right. Huh? What? Why? I thought you went home. You left me in front of the hospital, didn't you? I really wanted to tell Natalie something, so I went back to the hospital room. Then, 
I found out that she was crying. I asked her why, and she told me everything that you have said to her. No, this is just some sort of misunderstanding. Stop kidding me, Mom. Natalie was injured in an accident. She's even emotionally unstable. You shouldn't talk to her like that. It's really disgusting. I can't help it. I'm just an honest person. I'm the type of person who tells the truth about what I saw and what I thought. Robert, let me be honest with you. Natalie is not good enough for you, so you two should get a divorce. Huh? What are you talking about? You're very talented, and you've been doing well with your job too. I'm proud of you. But Natalie is different. She didn't even graduate from college. She's a high school dropout. But she graduated from a culinary school. She's even learning how to bake at a bakery that everyone around here knows. What's wrong with you, Mom? All she does is dreaming. It's too unrealistic. I'm saying that there are other women who would be better match for you. Like Kelly, for example. Huh? Kelly? What are you saying all of a sudden? I've been telling you about that for a while. How about Kelly instead of Natalie? Seriously? I thought that was an offensive joke, but I didn't know that you were serious about that. Of course I was serious. Kelly is an amazing woman. She's brilliant and she works as a banker. Women who are smart are the best. Just because Kelly is a banker doesn't mean she's the best. She's great. The person who has the ability to make money is the best. Anyway, I've got a good idea. What is it? I'm going to open an aesthetic salon. No kidding. You're opening a salon? Yes. Isn't that nice? I've never heard a single word about that, though. You're not a licensed esthetician or anything like that. How are you going to run the business? I'm going to get the license from now on. But it's going to cost a lot of money to open the salon with all the equipment and initial costs, right? That's why I'm thinking of borrowing money from the bank. I see. But I don't think banks will lend money to a startup company that doesn't have a good credit score. You should think twice. That's why I came up with this idea. If you marry Kelly, we'll have two bankers in our house. Both of you can be my guarantors. I can borrow money and my dream will come true, right? For heaven's sake, Mom. You gotta be kidding me. With that, I can set up a fancy salon and invite the neighbors too. Oh, maybe I should invite Miss Anderson, who just opened a tacky grocery store. I have to show her that I'm different. I'm sure she won't be able to compete with me no matter how hard she tries. I should at least show her how talented I am in doing business. Cut it out, will you? Huh? Robert, what's wrong? You look scary somehow. How selfish can you be? Neither me nor Natalie are your property. Also, Kelly shouldn't be involved in this matter. How could you make such a fuss about marriage without getting her permission in the first place? I'm appalled. Oh, it's okay. Kelly wouldn't say no, would she? She's going to be 35 soon, right? 35 years old and married woman is desperate to get married. How could she refuse the chance to marry a guy as good as you, Robert? I can't believe you've gone that far. I didn't tell you this because I owe you for bringing me up until now. But honestly speaking, your heart is rotten. How much longer will you continue to mock the people around you? Why don't you be honest with yourself, Robert? You didn't even say anything when you saw your wife in the hospital room. I can understand that. You really hate her, don't you? That ugly woman. It's okay to be honest with me, dear. Natalie is not ugly. I love her no matter what, and I have no intention of breaking up with her. Really? Okay, that's enough. I'll talk to Kelly directly. We get along well with each other, you know? If you don't cooperate with me, I'll never consider you my son anymore. Fine then. Go ahead with your nasty plan. By the way, do you want me to show our conversation to Kelly? She's here with me now. What? Looks like she's pretty upset with you, Mom. Well, it can't be helped. It's because you're making fun of the person who saved her child's life. If I were in the same situation, I'm sure that I'd do the same thing. What? Her child? 
but she told me she was single. What do you mean that Natalie saved her child? Kelly got divorced a few years ago. Her son, who usually lives with her husband, came to visit her today. He met Natalie by chance at the park. When he ran into the street, Natalie saved him. And she was injured. She was out of the hospital room when we came. The fact is, Natalie saved Kelly's son. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that Kelly saw our conversation? Do you mean the one in which you said something about her age? Yeah, she read all of it. You're being rude to her. Oh, no. She said that she's not thinking about marriage right now and she doesn't have the guts to take someone's husband away. I didn't mean it that way, Kelly. Please, listen to me. Just let me explain. It's too late to make things right now. Anyway, I agree with your suggestion. I'll stop thinking of you as my mother from now on. Open a salon or whatever you want, but do it on your own. Just don't depend on me or Kelly, okay? Wait, Robert. That was a joke, of course. You shouldn't have taken it seriously. Besides, what will happen to my dream if you and Kelly don't cooperate? I've already told my neighbors that I'm going to open my salon next year. Please help me make my dream come true. Why are you telling people about such a crazy plan? Are you out of your mind? You haven't even studied professionally. Even if you open a salon, you won't get any customers. You must take responsibility for what you've done. I'm not getting involved anymore. Oh, no. Anyway, give the phone to Natalie. Let me talk to her. How may I help you, Clementine? Natalie, please convince Robert. If he can't do it, ask Kelly instead. What do you mean by that? Could it be... Are you saying that Robert should leave me and get married to Kelly so both of them can raise money for your salon? Do you want them to make your dream come true? Please stop joking. Why? Isn't it great to make dreams come true? You said it's good to have dreams. If you think so, you must persuade Robert to invest in my business. What? But you made fun of people who are chasing their dreams, didn't you? You told me a lot of terrible things too. Did I say so? I totally forgot about that. People who laugh at other people's dreams don't deserve to talk about dreams. By the way, you just want to look good in front of other people by opening your own salon, so it's not a dream. I can't let Robert support you because you are a nuisance to others. You don't know anything about that. Don't act like you know everything. If I open a salon, maybe your face will turn beautiful, right? As you can see, I don't have a beautiful face anymore. I don't live my life in a way that I'm ashamed of. I'm not ashamed of this car either. I don't need you to take care of me. The only thing I'm ashamed of is your behavior, Clementine. You are such a disgusting person who always looks down on people. That is the only thing I'm ashamed of. But I am glad that Robert has decided to cut ties with you, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Cut ties? I didn't hear anything about that. Let's calm down and discuss it once. It's already late to discuss that today. There are many things I want you to know, like talking about my dreams. Clementine, it's too late for that now. You don't like to talk about dreams and romance, do you? I don't want to hear it either. You shouldn't act like a little girl. You are already 60 years old. You're not young anymore. Natalie? Are you still awake? Yes, I am. What's wrong? Sorry to bother you when you're exhausted. It's okay. I feel better now that I've said all I wanted to say to your mother. I'm really sorry about what mom said to you. I didn't realize that until now. I'm sorry that you had to put up with that all the time. No worries. I'm sorry that my face now has a huge scar on it. You must be a little embarrassed too. I'm going to make an effort to cover the scar by using cosmetics. Don't be silly. I'm not embarrassed. I'm really sorry I didn't say anything to you in the hospital room. It's not that I was embarrassed to even look at you. I just couldn't find the right words to say. Could you explain about that more? I'm aware of how you spent so much time, money, and effort to stay beautiful. I remember your lovely smile. 
When I heard you saying that you were injured when saving a child and called the scar an honorable injury, I felt sad somehow. I don't know, but maybe I was moved by your bravery. Really? You didn't even cry when we were watching that famous movie together. It's surprising to hear that you were moved by my bravery. I may look like this, but actually, I'm a sensitive guy. I really thought you are the best wife in this entire world. You are just too good for me. But looks like I've hurt your feelings by not telling you the right words when you needed it the most. I'm so sorry. Let's just forget about that, Robert. I'm so happy to hear that you really care about me. I was thinking that maybe you felt disgusted with me because of my appearance. Of course not. I've been in love with you since middle school. There's no way I would hate you for that. Are you serious? I'm not a kind of guy who likes to tell jokes. By the way, now that we've saved up some money, why don't we get started? Start what? You said you're about to start your own business, right? Why don't we make that dream come true? Seriously? I found a nice, inexpensive property in Orlando. It's been renovated, and the interior is not bad too. The rent is cheap, and it's in a great location. You always wanted to open a bakery with a view of the ocean, right? That place is definitely the perfect one to attract customers. Wait a minute. Are you really sure about this? You've been looking for the perfect property all this time? But since the place is in Orlando, we have to move, right? You'll have to quit your job for that. That's fine. I'm just here for a quick income. Your dream is more important to me. What? Are you sure? Really? Ever since you told me about your dream in middle school, I've been wanting to support you. I didn't have any dreams, but I was so moved. Then, when I was in college, we met again at our middle school reunion. You were still saying the same thing, so I was really happy. I wanted to make your dream come true. I want to support you all the way. Thank you, Robert. I'll do my best. I'm so grateful to have you as my husband. I'll make this bakery a place where everyone will be happy. I believe that you can do it. I'll work hard together with you. I really appreciate it. My husband and I started to prepare for our new business together. A few months later, we opened the bakery of our dreams. I once envisioned a store with a small terrace by the sea. I had never studied marketing before. I thought I would have a hard time attracting people. But I was surprised that the bakery quickly became popular, thanks to Robert's marketing strategy. Nowadays, many customers from young women to families have been coming to visit our bakery. The latest good news is, Kelly came all the way from far away with her husband and children to visit our bakery. Anyway, about what happened to my mother-in-law after that, she started studying for a certification to open an aesthetic salon. But she gave up immediately because she couldn't cope with her study. Since she has told everyone around her about the salon, people began to look at her with cold eyes. They also found out that she had been bullying me. Recently, she has not been getting along well with her neighbors. Although I said I would insulate her, she is still Robert's mother. I intend to have a talk with her sooner or later. For the time being, I will let her cool down and reflect on her situation. The scar on my face from the accident is gradually getting better, but it still remains. To be honest, as a woman, I am in shock, but being depressed won't get me anywhere. I want to work as hard as I can so that I don't have to give up my small bakery, which has been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. With Robert's help, we will work together to live a happy life. Hey, Alice, what's wrong with you? Esther, it's been a while. Everything is just fine. Why did you ask that? Why did I ask that? It's because you didn't contact me at all. It's terrible of you to keep such an important thing from me as a secret. I'm sorry, I've just been so busy lately. I heard about that. You guys bought a condo, didn't you? And it's a high rise. That's amazing. My son, Hector, spent a lot of money on it. Did Hector tell you about that? 
I was going to contact you when everything gets settled. I've been so busy with the move. I'm sorry I haven't been able to contact you. You should have contacted me, you know. I was surprised to hear about it yesterday. I'm so excited to hear that you're moving to a high rise in New York City. I'm so happy for you that you were able to marry Hector, Alice. Thanks to Hector that you're now a member of the upper class society. Well, yes, I had no problem living in the apartment I've been living in before we moved out. But Hector insisted that he wanted to live in a high rise. A high rise. He's worked hard for that. He says he's recently been promoted as a department manager. He's indeed a brilliant kid, just like me. There's no way a person in his position would live in such a shabby apartment you were living in. He was right to take the plunge without listening to a poor woman like you. You should be grateful to my son since he's the one who's providing for you. Oh, gosh. So, I'm thinking of going to see your new home sometime in the near future. When are you available? Tomorrow? What? Tomorrow? Well, sorry, Esther. I don't think tomorrow works. We just moved in, so things aren't organized yet. Besides, I've got a lot of work to do because of the move. So, I'd appreciate it if you could reschedule your visit. You said you just moved in. It's been a month, right? No matter how big the condo is, it can be organized in a month. You're not skipping work by saying that you're busy, are you? I'm not slacking off. I'm also working, so I can't spend all my time just for cleaning up. What work? You're a housewife, so cleaning up comes first, right? It's a different case this time. Besides, you know, this month, the kids have school events, so I don't have much time. I've almost finished the living room and our stuff. But Hector hasn't put away his personal belongings. There are still a lot of cardboard boxes inside the room. Why don't you take care of those things right away? What a useless wife. Thanks to Hector that you were able to move into a high rise. And now you're telling me that you can't even clean up for him? You're not doing your job properly as my son's wife. I'm also working, so I'm supposed to take care of myself. I do most of the childcare and house chores. Of course you do those things. Your job doesn't pay much anyway. It's natural for a woman to take care of the house chores. It's also a woman's job to take care of her husband. So stop messing around and get all things done. Jeez. Oh yes, how are my lovely grandchildren? They haven't been visiting me lately, which is kind of boring. They are doing just fine. They're both in upper grades of elementary school now, so they're busy with club activities and playing with their friends. I see. They're very bright just like me and Hector. They share their genes with their grandmother. You have to let them come visit me regularly. We need to make them understand how blessed they are to have my son as their father and me as their grandmother. Don't you understand that unless I tell you? You really are a very inconsiderate wife. I'm really glad that my grandchildren are different from you. I'm sorry. I'll tell the kids about that later. Oh my God, I guess I gotta go. If tomorrow doesn't work, I'll come visit you this weekend. You better make sure there are some good snacks and tea when I visit you. A good wife takes care of such things. This weekend? I have plans this weekend. Cancel those plans! I just told you that I'll visit you. You said tomorrow doesn't work, so I'm giving you a compromise. I have a meeting at work. You just gave me a short notice, and I can't make it because I have a prior engagement. Reuniting grandma with the grandkids is the top priority. Hector said that he'd be home this weekend. A good wife should be able to fit her husband's schedule into her own. Why don't you take time off to accommodate your husband's schedule? If you put in work meetings, you wouldn't be able to take care of your husband. You don't know enough about being a good wife. I don't know why you're suddenly telling me this, but... Yes, whatever! I've had enough of your appeal about being an incapable wife. I'll eat dinner and go home, so please take care of me. I'll even check your level of cooking. If you serve me a half-baked dish, I'll give you a private lecture about how to cook properly. See you later! Wait, Esther, you're troubling me. Oh dear. Hey, Alice! A high-rise is awesome, isn't it? It's the perfect place for brilliant people like me, my son, and my grandchildren to live. It feels so good to look down on people from a higher floor. It looks as if those poor people were crawling on the ground. Good evening, Esther. Uh, how can I help you? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I got lost in my own world. You know what? I'm so excited that I'm going to be able to live in that world. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Are you moving to a high rise too? Yes! That's what I mean. I went to your place the other day and the thought just crossed my mind. I'm the one who deserves to live here. I just knew it. What? Are you telling me that you're moving in with us? I thought you bought a room at the high rise yourself. Why would I have to buy it myself when I already have one I can live in? It's my son and his wife's house, which means it's also mine. No, you can't have such an important matter decided without me and my husband's permission. I'll have to talk to Hector about it. Oh, you didn't hear from him? My son already agreed to it. What's that? I haven't heard that at all. Living in a high-rise will give me peace of mind in my old age. I've been thinking that it's about time Hector and I move in together. It's a good thing he bought a condo. I'll get my stuff there tomorrow, so please clean up the mess. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. That's too selfish. You can't move into the house since we don't have enough room. Each of the four of us has our own room. The only space available is the living room. You don't need a room of your own, Alice. When I saw it the other day, I liked the view from your room the best. Starting tomorrow, that will be my room. I won't hear any objections. You should sleep in the living room. That's good enough for you. You should be thankful that you live in a high rise. I can't do that. I take my work home with me. Besides, I also do remote work some days in the week. I need a room where I can work in peace. Besides, it's such a short notice. I'll be at work tomorrow, so I won't be able to pick up the packages. Alice, you know what? You're not doing much work anyway, so why don't you just take a day off? Your mother-in-law just told you that she's moving out. It's your duty as my son's wife to take a day off from your work and greet her politely. You must be really incompetent if you don't understand that. I really feel sorry for Hector, who married a terrible person like you. Huh? I told you that I can't do that, so please understand, Esther. Hector knows that you are moving in, right? Then he's the one who should take a day off to help you. I didn't know about the move until some minutes ago, so I can't take a day off if you suddenly ask me to. You really are an idiot. My son has an important job to support his family. He can't just suddenly take a day off. You seem to have a strange pride in your work. You earn less than Hector, you have no responsibility, and your job is worthless, right? It's natural for a woman to be a housewife and take care of the family, but you're just too proud to do so. But to make my son, the breadwinner of the family, take a day off because of your petty pride is beyond insane. You are such a useless wife that you can't even understand such a thing. When I move there, you'll have to educate your children well. They shouldn't grow up to be a person like you. Anyway, tomorrow when you get my stuff, take everything out of the cardboard boxes and organize them. Since you seem to have a lot of good furnitures, you can keep those in your room. I'll use it. I'll be there tomorrow for dinner. If it's not done when I get there, I won't forgive you. That's absurd. You really are troubling me. I won't give up my room or my furniture. If you love Hector so much, then you should use his room. You should take care of the moving by yourself since I won't be able to help you. I've already reserved a moving company. Also, I signed a contract to sell the house I've been living in. I can't change the date. Besides, Hector needs his private time too. It's true that me and my son get along well together, but I don't like the idea of us sharing the same bedroom, so I can't take your suggestion. As a wife, you should live your life with us as a family. I'm taking care of a useless wife like you without abandoning you. You should be grateful for that. Why are you being so rebellious? Taking care of me? Hector doesn't take care of the house chores and looks after the kids at all. I'm the one doing all of them. And on top of that, you insist to move in with us? It's beyond unreasonable. You just can't do it because you're a bad wife. You're not even aware that it's normal for mother-in-law to move in with her son and his family. I'm going to give you a good lesson. You should be grateful to me for teaching you the common sense of this world. Even though you're an insane, useless wife, you're able to live in a high rise, thanks to me and my son.
See you tomorrow. Wait, Esther, I can't believe it. Hey, Alice, what are you doing? You don't have to come home again. What are you talking about all of a sudden? What's wrong with you? Don't you dare to talk to me like that. Hector told me about you. I heard you're having an affair while he's supporting you. You ungrateful bastard. You're not only useless, but you're also betraying your husband. What a despicable wife. What? Another mysterious accusation? I never committed an adultery. Did Hector really say that? My sweet son was crying and asking me for advice. He said he's thinking of divorcing you because you're having an affair. He doesn't even want to see you anymore. He let a useless wife like you to live in a high rise, but you betrayed him. No wonder he's in shock. That's why I won't let you enter the house when you get back. Oh, well, that's fine. I'm not going back there. You're such a good girl. Are you going to elope with your boyfriend? What an irresponsible mother. Well, that's convenient for us, so you can do what you want. We'll get full custody of the kids, of course. You'll never see your beautiful children again. I'll educate them in the ways of the upper class and raise them to be respectable children. Esther, you always have such interesting things to say. You've got it all wrong and you're so proud of yourself. Unfortunately, the children will never go back to that house again. The only ones who will remain there are you and Hector. Huh? What on earth are you talking about? I'm in the process of cleaning up the new house where me and my children will live. I've told the kids where this house is. I guess it's about time they come home. We will start a new life here so you and Hector can live in harmony without me and the kids. I know you're going to have a lot of trouble in the future, but good luck anyway. I don't get it. What do you mean that you've got yourself a new house? You are being deceived by your dearly beloved son. You know that? Hector is the one who was actually having an affair. Seriously? A kind and serious boy like Hector having an affair? He would never do such a thing. You're just trying to put the blame on my son, aren't you? Wow, I'm speechless. You love your son very much. You may find this hard to believe. I have the proof with me, so you can't get away with it. If you have the proof, show me then. It's a lie you made up anyway, isn't it? I'll show it to you if you want to see it. This is the proof that your son is having an affair. Before we moved into the high rise, I knew something was wrong. I noticed that he often went out alone on his days off. He usually doesn't work overtime since his workload isn't that much. But then he told me that he wants to move to a high rise for the future. I thought he was spending his time outside to do some research for the property, but I was wrong. I was cleaning Hector's room shortly after we moved in. I found a woman's jewelry that wasn't mine under my bed. So I took a sneak peek at Hector's cell phone and was convinced that he was having an affair. Hector brought his lover into the apartment we just moved into. Really? Even if that's true, what drove my son to the point of considering divorce is your fault because you are such a useless wife. That's why he decided to have an affair. You're getting carried away by saying you have the proof. You are the main cause Hector wants a divorce. A useless wife like you are not supposed to talk so proud like that. How dare you say that I'm useless? Since this is the last time I'm going to say what I want to say to you, I paid for that high rise with all my money. Hector doesn't pay at all. Therefore, the ownership of the room is mine. Huh? Stop talking nonsense. Do you think you can afford that when you don't even have a proper job? You should think more carefully before you lie. You're getting carried away by saying you've moved, but perhaps you still miss the high rise, don't you? You're just trying to steal it away from us by telling some random lies. I won't be fooled by that. On the contrary, do you think someone who gets paid with a modest amount of salary can afford to pay for a high rise? What are you talking about? Hector is only 40 years old and he's been promoted to be the department manager. He's not just an ordinary office worker. He's an upper class, super elite office worker. Hector hasn't been promoted. Not only is he still a section chief, but I heard that he's in danger of being demoted. What? That can't be true. I started my own company when my children enrolled at elementary school. After my company got off the ground, 
Hector gradually changed. At work, he seems to be handing over his work to his colleagues and doing nothing these days. Even when he was in danger of being demoted, he continued to slack off and had no sense of crisis at all. I guess he thinks that if he gets fired, he'll be fine because I'm there to support him. Although he is no longer doing housework, childcare, or even working, he is still a father. I was holding out the divorce for the sake of the children. What? Are you saying that my son is lying to me? That's right. Because you always say that you love your son so much. Hector just wants to look good in front of other people. So he said that he bought the high-rise with his own money anyway. Am I right? Yes! Hector said that he got promoted to be the department manager and that his salary will go up. Both you and your son really disgust me. Hector bought a high-rise with my money without paying a penny himself. He made up a story about my infidelity to kick me out so that he can get alimony from me and ownership of the high-rise. The fact that you offered to live together with us was a good chance for Hector because he can get rid of me without getting his own hands dirty. Truly, you and your son are foolish, but it's too late. I already hired a lawyer and I'm preparing for a trial. A trial? Yes, before Hector puts his plan into action. I'm glad that I caught the proof that he's having an affair. Since we already have all the evidence, Hector's plan is no longer possible to be done. Therefore, if you want to continue to live in that room, please discuss that with your son and buy it from me. I will sell it to you with the market price. I won't raise the price but I won't give you any discount either. By the way, Hector seems to be paying a lot of money to his lover. I doubt he has much money saved up. He seems to have spent it all in anticipation of getting a lot of alimony from me. So instead of buying a high rise, I doubt he can even afford to pay for a living next month. He seems to be contributing more than his own salary by using credit card. Wait a minute! I don't get it at all! So you're saying that I can't live in this high-rise anymore? After all the trouble I went through to get rid of you? If you can't buy it at the market price, I'll have to ask you to leave. I will sell it to someone who is worthy of living there, not someone who can't even pay the rent. Oh yeah, and I won't let you see your grandchildren at all from now on. What? Stop joking! The children will be sad if they don't see their grandmother. You can have a divorce, but it's irresponsible of you as a parent to make the children sad. They don't seem to miss you at all. Whenever they visited you, they said that you were speaking ill about me endlessly. You yelled at the store clerks whenever you went out with them. They have come to the point where they don't want to visit their grandmother anymore. Living with you for the past months has been very stressful for the kids. They were overjoyed when I told them that we were going to live in a different house. Oh, no! But you'll let them see my son, right? He's their father! No, I won't let them see Hector either. It seems that the children were aware of his infidelity. They said they heard a stranger's voice coming from their father's room on the day they came home early from morning classes. When I told them about the separation, they told me that their father asked them to keep that as a secret. What kind of father would allow his children to have such a nasty secret? I can't believe he would bring an adulterer into the house where his children live. They are just kids. They'll forget all of that soon. It's just one time. How can they hate their own father just because of that? For kids, family troubles will stay in their minds. Even if it was just once, it's enough to make them not trust their father. I have a responsibility to protect my kids from people who can't even understand such things. I will not let you and your son have anything to do with my kids from now on. Oh, thank goodness that I didn't get lost. Well then, you'll be hearing from my lawyer for more details. Until then, enjoy your life in the high-rise for the time being. Goodbye. Wait a minute! Alice! Hey! Let's talk about it! I have nowhere to live if this house is gone! Oh, please come back! I'll apologize! I beg you! Please! Alice! And so the divorce was finalized. Of course, Hector didn't have enough money to pay for the rent at the high-rise. Both he and his mother were evicted from there. In addition, he had to pay alimony and child support to me. His already small income became even smaller and his life became a living wreck. My ex-husband 
who despised his own family and contributed all of his income to the affair, begged to be allowed to live in his lover's house, but he was rejected without a second thought. Now they live in a small room in a very cheap, old, broken-down apartment with no bathroom and a shared toilet. Later, a plan to build a large commercial facility near the tower block was proposed and the land's prices rose. I was relieved to be able to sell off the high-rise with just a little loss. I'm now living peacefully with my children in my new house. Today, I want to eat mac and cheese. Have you decided on the menu yet? If it's already prepared, I'll eat what you made. Well, actually... Are you telling me that you're not in the mood for mac and cheese? That's not what I meant. What is it then? Do you mind if I get a pizza for delivery or something today? Yeah, I'd be happy to, but it's rare for you to have pizza delivered. Usually, you hate that, and you'll say you're on a diet or something. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I know. I'm trying to lose weight, but I just don't feel well today. What? Do you have a fever? I heard flu is going around right now. I went to see the doctor, but he said it's probably just a cold. No fever, no cough. What about COVID? It wasn't that either. I had it checked along with the flu test. Could it be that you are... I thought so, but I was wrong. I got tested and the result was negative. I didn't expect you understood what I was trying to ask you. You were curious whether I was pregnant or not, right? Yes, but it seems that you're not. You've been working overtime a lot lately. You must be exhausted. Don't worry about me. You should get some rest. I don't know why you say that since you usually don't. That's because you haven't been giving me any attention lately. I'm sorry, but it's not that I don't care about you. I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. I'll ask the company to give me some days off. I've been working on my days off too lately. That sounds good. Maybe I'll take one too. It's nice to go out and relax on a weekday. I told you that I'm not feeling well, didn't I? I don't feel like going out at the moment. Besides, I don't want to get even worse and bother you with my illness. But, you know, if you take a few days of good rest, you'll be fine, right? I guess so. How are you? Do you feel a little better? I feel tired, but I also feel that I'm not my usual self. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm sure I don't feel great. You slept through the night and still not feeling better? I'm sorry to hear that since I was expecting us to have fun together today. I'm disappointed. Sorry, I'm tired. I've been feeling like this all the time. I feel as if my body is some sort of rock, that it's hard for me to move around. I don't have a fever, and I have no clue why I feel so exhausted. I think I'd better go see the doctor again. Hold on a sec. Maybe you should get insurance first. Insurance? For what? Medical insurance and life insurance. What? Why life insurance? I wonder if I'm gonna lose my life. No, that's not what I meant. I didn't say anything like losing your life. But if you were diagnosed with a major prolonged illness, you wouldn't be able to get any insurance. If that happens, you have to pay for those expensive medical treatments. Insurance is just in case something goes wrong. Isn't it possible to have it just in case before going to see a doctor? Emma, I remember you said that you need to review your insurance. Maybe now is the perfect time to do that. Well, I need to consider about that. But I also wonder if now is the perfect time to do that. Also, is it even possible to do that right before the doctor's appointment? Don't worry. Besides, there's a possibility that you're seriously ill. As long as nothing happens for five months after enrollment, when you get sick, you'll get the insurance money. Five months? Are you suggesting that I can't go to the hospital 
even if something nasty happens to me during that period. You only feel unwell because of fatigue from overtime work, right? There's no way you're having a major illness. Why are you worried? I wonder why. I feel weak when I don't feel well for days. We're still young. You aren't sick either. Besides, you might be fine after the checkup, right? I guess so. Somehow, I feel more energetic after I talk to you, Gerald. That's the spirit. Well, let's go sign up for insurance now, shall we? I made an appointment with my agent. Do we have to do it so soon? Because you're going to the hospital tomorrow, right? We need to take care of everything before that day. Seems that you're so excited. No, I'm not. I may sound excited, but the truth is I'm worried about you. To be honest, I was thinking what I should do if something bad happened to you. It's a nightmare if I couldn't help you just because I didn't have the money. I'm so nervous. Thanks for your concern. I'll meet you at the ticket gate of the nearest station after work. Okay then. But somehow, I don't feel comfortable about this. Did you call me, Emma? I need you to come to the hospital right now. What's wrong? The doctor wants to talk to you. Why don't you just ask him about the details? I'm watching a movie right now, and it's just getting exciting. I... I've been diagnosed with cancer. What? It metastasized. They said it must have progressed fast because I'm so young. They said I should have come earlier. That's good, isn't it? Which part of that is good, Gerald? Didn't you get an insurance before you went to see the doctor the first time? Now you don't have to worry about money. I hope I get better. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Is it that serious? They said I have only one year to live. No way. I didn't do anything wrong. Why do I have to go through this? Gerald, help me, please. There's so many things I still want to do. I don't want to die yet. Emma, it may be impossible, but let's calm down first. Medical treatment is advancing rapidly now. They may have told you that you only have one year to live, but no one can determine that for sure. Surgery is too difficult, so I'll have to use anti-cancer drugs. I heard that it's very painful. Do you have to stay in the hospital all the time? Will you be able to come home? I guess I can stay at home during the anti-cancer treatment. I'm sure the doctor will explain everything in detail. Come here now. I can't do this anymore. I understand. Do you need anything else? I'll call my parents and bring them with me. You don't need to call your parents. Just come here right away. Emma, how are you feeling? Are you going to be discharged from the hospital soon? Yeah, finally I can go home. You did a great job. You really are awesome. Yeah, I endured it all by myself. You didn't even visit me when I was hospitalized. What a cold-hearted person. I was busy with work, you know. I had to take care of the housework too, but I didn't stop thinking about you. Didn't your mother help you? Well, sometimes. You can't ask her to do it every day, can you? I mean, my dad's here too. How did you know mom was here? When your mother came to visit me, she scolded me. She said that it's my fault. Because I was sick, you had to do the housework for your sake. She also told me that if she didn't help you, you'll collapse from overwork. Mom said that to you? I'm so proud of her. Huh? You're not worried about me? What are you talking about? That's not what I meant. Oh, God. I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. Anyway, I've got some good news for you. What's the good news? Since you're getting out of the hospital, even if only temporarily, why don't we go out for a while to celebrate that? I wonder if I can enjoy, since I'm still not feeling well. 
The doctor said it's better to get some fresh air. You are well aware of that, aren't you? You probably won't be able to move as much as you used to, but it's more stressful for you to stay at home all the time. Well, yeah, but I can't go long distances. I don't think I can stay outdoors all the time. Then why don't we go to a nearby spa? Stay at a nice hotel. Why don't we just eat delicious food and spend a relaxing time in the room? I'll find a hotel with a beautiful view. You don't have to worry about anything, Emma. I'll drive the car and you can just relax. Thanks, Gerald. But I think I'll be walking like a baby. I think we should do that next time. Don't worry. My mom and dad will support you. What? Are your parents coming too? I'm not sure I can do it alone, so I asked them to help me. I'm afraid I must say no to that. I don't think your parents will enjoy the trip, and I'll feel uncomfortable too. Don't worry about that. We're family after all. What if it were the other way around? I'm not in perfect health anyway. That's a good point. I know it might be difficult for you, but I want to go on a spa trip. I'm undergoing anti-cancer treatment. Besides, your mother is being very sarcastic with me. It was a sudden thing, and she was just freaking out. She was worried about me. But still... Anyway, I'll force you to come with me when you get out of the hospital. No way. Hey, what did you do? What? Who are you? Are you a fake using my wife's account? Stop talking nonsense. It's me. Who on earth are you? I'm Emma. I'm alive and safe. That can't be true because... Are you trying to say that I should be dead? I'm alive. That's impossible. You fell down the observatory stairs, remember? Because you and your mother pushed me down the stairs. We would not do that, would we? No, I'm sure. What makes you say that? Do you have any proof? The person who was pushed down says so. I was taken to a nearby observatory overlooking the ocean. You kindly gave me a piggyback ride to the top. And then, you just pushed me off, didn't you? After you pushed me, you guys took another route down without being seen, didn't you? Why would we harm you? Anyway, why are you still alive? You fell down those high stone steps. The rucksack I was carrying saved me. It caught on a rock next to the stone steps. I was grabbing the rock and trying to get up when a young couple came and saved me. If it wasn't for that rock, I wouldn't have survived. Huh? How is that possible? You don't seem happy that your wife is still alive. I didn't say that. Of course I'm happy. That can't be true. Why do you say that? You fell down the stone steps, rolling down. I was too scared to go see you. I was shocked. I don't think so. You are more shocked when you found out that I'm alive. Why are you saying such terrible things? I saw all of that. What? A certain exchange of messages. No kidding. I told her about the spa trip. How did it go? Did she get suspicious? No, she didn't. But she didn't seem to want to go. I told her we'd go somewhere with a beautiful view and relax. I see. But that's okay. She won't be able to walk properly anyway. She can't do anything about it once you carry her in your arms and put her in the car. She has life insurance, right? Leave that part to me. Okay, then. Now she has cleared the five-month deductible on her life insurance policy. Now all we have to do is check into a hotel, then take her to the observatory. It's going to be a little tough for you to carry her on your back. But it's easy when you think of all the money you're going to earn, isn't it? But I don't know if it's going to work out that well. Dad doesn't know anything, does he? He won't find out. He's in a good mood when he's drunk. He'll be fast asleep in his room by the time we leave for the observatory. 
That's why we picked a hotel with spa facility inside. Well, yeah, but I'm not sure I can do it properly. Don't be a coward. Get a grip. A wife who has been told she doesn't have long to live takes a trip to make her last memories with her husband. Unable to overcome her fear of death, she contemplated suicide. But before reaching her destination, she slipped down the stairs. The story makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yes, I guess. What? You don't sound very enthusiastic. If you just want to spend the money to pay for your wife's medical bills while she waits to die, that's fine. No, I honestly don't think that's a good idea. I need the money right now. It's your fault anyway. Why did you go into debt for nothing? You've been doing that multiple times that you can't afford to pay the monthly payment. What can I do? My allowance wasn't enough. It's okay to have that grudge too. Think of it as punishment for your wife. I see, that's right. Even if you don't do anything, she'll be gone in a year. It's just that it's a little earlier, right? I guess so. That's what I'll think. Okay, I'll do my best on the day of the decision. Please support me on that day. Leave it to me. This is the talk history of you and your mother. This is the proof. Why? How did you manage to get that? After I was treated for my injuries, I asked my father to take me home late at night. Your wife had just died and you were playing video games drinking. You were also snoring loudly in your sleep. That's impossible, right? So I thought for sure there must be some evidence. That's why I had him check your phone. Huh? That's a violation of my privacy. How could you say that? I think you guys are guilty of attempted murder. You were suffering from your illness, so it's how we showed you our kindness. I dropped you down the stairs, but you survived. You're terrible. Doesn't it hurt your feelings to do that? Absolutely not. I don't have any money to waste paying for my wife's medical bills when she only has a year to live. Frankly speaking, I don't want to take care of you. I can't believe you just said that. What a terrible guy. Anyway, you're going to hell. Yeah, whatever. By the way, you've been borrowing money without telling me, haven't you? I can't make it on just $200 a month. Even high school kids get that much nowadays. I was getting the same amount. Even with the same amount of money, what's not enough is not enough. The problem is in the way you spend it. You've been spending so much money for online games. You're also wasting money on drinks and buying drinks for friends and colleagues. You also want to buy products from those luxurious brands to look good. Not to forget betting on horse racing. What? Did you think I didn't know that? I knew you were working hard every day, so I didn't tell you. What I do with the money I earn is my business, right? Anyway, I won't pay a penny more for your treatment. It's your disease, so you're on your own. Yeah, that's the plan. Because when we get divorced, I won't have anything to do with you. You won't have to pay for my treatment anymore. That's what I'm hoping for. I won't have to take care of you anymore. Of course. I'll change the beneficiary of the insurance money too. Huh? What do you mean? You know that, don't you? Why should I let a stranger like you get my insurance money? Because you signed the contract and I'm the beneficiary. Are you stupid? It doesn't work like that. I can change the beneficiary whenever I want. I don't want you to do that. I don't think it's going to make much difference even if you get the money. What do you mean? Where do you think I am? Your parents' house? Hospital? No. Right now, I'm at the police station. Why are you there? I told you before. You and your mother are attempted murderers. No way. I just explained the situation with the evidence I got. 
You're lying, right? I'm not lying. I almost died. Of course, I'm having the police to take a look at the conversation with your mother. Are you serious? I told you I'm not lying. No, wait. You misunderstood me. Let me explain. Explain what? The evidence is perfect. You can't get away with this, okay? Now, they're getting ready for each of you. You and your mother are going to be charged with attempted murder. That's not what I said. It was my mother's suggestion. I couldn't refuse because she told me to do it. But you finally agreed with her. And it was you who pushed me down the stairs. You are the crime suspect. I wonder who's more guilty, you or your mother. Why don't you do some research before the police come? Emma, I'm sorry. I apologize for everything I've said and done. I was up to my neck in debt, so I had no choice. We're a married couple, right? You understand that, don't you? Married couple? You gotta be kidding me. I told you, didn't I? You're the one who's going to hell. I don't want that to happen. I don't want to go to jail. I think it's better for you to go to jail. You can't borrow money and your debt won't increase. Why don't you ask your father to pay the rest? Oh no. After that, my husband and mother-in-law were taken away by the police. At my parents-in-law's house, my father-in-law, who had no idea what was going on, watched in amazement. My husband and mother-in-law were arrested and charged. I knew my husband was in debt. When the investigation went further, it seems that my mother-in-law also had a large amount of debt. Naturally, my father-in-law found out and divorced her. I feel sorry for my father-in-law when I think about his feelings. But in the end, I think it was the best solution for him. After I recovered from my injuries, I was given another round of anti-cancer treatment. To my surprise, the cancer cells disappeared from my body and I was completely cured. I think it was a miracle. When I found out the result, I shed tears of joy together with my parents. I learned that such miracles can happen. There is a possibility of recurrence. I need to be careful. But I'm now able to live a normal life at home with my parents while undergoing regular checkups. It is thanks to my parents that I'm able to live a peaceful life. I'm glad that I was able to get a divorce at that time. I wonder if I should be grateful to my ex-husband for that. Good evening, Kelly. It's about 8 p.m. there, right? Hello, Vernon. It's almost 8.30 p.m. Was it a busy day at your work today? Yeah, it was. I'm used to it, but it's still tiring. Thank you for working hard every day for our family. But now that your overseas assignment is over, you can finally come home, right? I'm sure the kids are looking forward to finally meeting you. They don't usually say any of their concerns, but I think they miss their father. Really? I thought they already forgot me. You're their father. They won't forget you just because they haven't met you in three years. But Kyle is only five years old, right? He was two when I was transferred to Singapore. I thought he wouldn't remember. Don't worry, because you would come back here for long vacations, and we used to go on vacation here. I'm sure he knows you're his father. That's how it goes with parents and children. At first... I really didn't like the idea of three years overseas assignment, but now that I think about it, it all happened so fast. I was so busy raising kids and working that three years seemed like a blink of an eye when I think about it now. I've been trained a lot. By the way, when is your return date? Two months from now, on the 27th. So close. I'm looking forward to it. What do you want to eat first after a long absence? Let's see. I think I'll have macaroni and cheese. Mac and cheese? I'll get it ready for you then. I'll get some expensive ingredients. I hope they're not too expensive. Leave it to me. The kids love mac and cheese too. Are you going back to the headquarters as soon as you get back? Sounds like that's the plan. 
So they're putting me online right now for a meeting with the head office in New York. It's pretty tough because of the time difference. I think they are counting on you. I'm happy for you. My colleagues said that three years in Singapore is a customary career path. I'm sure I'll be able to work at a similar position when I go back to the head office. I can repay the favor you've done to our family for the past three years. Oh, please don't say that. It's only natural for a wife to look after the house while her husband is away. But I'm so happy for you. After three years of hard work in Singapore, it's all worth it. All of your hard work is now paid off. Yes, you're right. Anyway, I need to talk to you. Okay, what is it? Um... Oh, sorry, Vernon. Can I call you later? I think the kids have started fighting. Fighting? A girl and a boy fighting each other? Lately, Kyle has been learning a lot of new words, so he has been arguing with his sister. I see. I don't like it when they fight. Well, I'll see you tomorrow or when I have time. Sorry, I'll get back to you. It's been barely three years since my husband Vernon was transferred to Singapore by himself. He will be back home in two months. I had no doubt in my mind that we would be able to live together as a normal family. I was looking forward to that day to come, but I never imagined that he would betray me like that. Over the weekend, I sent a message to him. Hello, Vernon. I hope this is good timing for you. You said that you want to have a discussion with me the other day, didn't you? Oh, yeah, that one. Do you mind if we have a discussion about that now? Kate is at the dance club and Kyle is taking a nap. Napping. That's nice. Kids are supposed to play and sleep as much as they can. The other day, Kate told me that adults can buy whatever they want whenever they want even though that's not true. So, what is it that you want to talk about? Is it about the things after you came back here? No, it's not about that. Actually, I've been thinking about what I'm going to say, but when I get back, I want you to get out of that house. What? Sorry, I don't understand why I should do that. What do you mean you want me to leave? I can't think straight. I want to change my family. What do you mean by that? I really don't get it at all. Explain it properly so I can understand. Okay, calm down and listen to me. Actually, I met someone I like in Singapore. I'm in love with her. Someone you love? In Singapore? Yes, and I want to go back home with her and our child. A uh, child? Is the child hers? Or is it yours? She's our child. She's two years old now. So you're saying you had a local wife there? You cheated on me and had a child with her, right? And that the child is two years old? That's just right after you were transferred there. So you're saying that you have a child there, but you just want to come back home without thinking about what you're going to do next? The moment I met her, I knew that we were meant for each other. I knew she was the one. So I'm going to take her and the child back home to live in the house. And I want you guys to leave. Wait a minute. That's so selfish. Does she know I exist? You're married, remember? She doesn't know anything about you and the kids. I can't tell her that. So I want you to shut up and get out of that house. Huh? Vernon? Do you have any idea what you're talking about? I mean, you're cheating on me. That's a great betrayal. Betrayal or not, it's my life, so I can live it the way I want. It's none of your business. How can it be none of my business? You have to take responsibility. As for me, what are you going to do about Kate and Kyle? Are you going to divorce me? Pay for the alimony and child support? I'm going to feed my new family, remember? That's why my money will go to my new family. Are you saying that you're not going to pay me alimony or child support? No kidding! That's so selfish of you! You work for the government employee, 
and you've been living with the kids for the last three years. So you don't need me to be there for you, right? She needs me. That's why I want to support her properly. Are you saying you're coming back with that girlfriend of yours? We're getting married. So I'm going to go back home first, clean up the house. Also, I'll get divorced from you, pick her up, and come back. So you're going back and forth, aren't you? That sounds like a lot of work. That's why I wanted to tell you about the divorce and the house first. Then, even if it's less than two months from now, I'm sure that you're ready to move out. I don't know. Is it really that big of a deal? You're asking me out of the blue. After three years of your absence, I thought we'd finally be able to live together as a family in this house. I'm really sorry about that, but it's going to be me and my new family living in the house. I'm sorry for the short notice, but I need you to step aside for the sake of my happiness. That's too selfish. Why should I step aside for your happiness? What about our family's happiness? But this is a decision that's been made. You'll have to leave the house as soon as possible. And of course, move your stuff out neatly so that my new family and I can move in comfortably. I'll come back home once in two months, on the 15th, and we'll discuss about the divorce. I'm not going to change my mind. Are you really going to divorce me, Vernon? Of course. I'm getting a divorce and I'll be marrying my girlfriend. If you divorce me, I won't forgive you. After such a terrible betrayal, I'm going to make sure I'm thoroughly done with you. Wow, that's a scary thing to say. I'll make sure you pay for the alimony and child support for the kids. I'm not going to just sit back and cry myself to sleep while you're doing this horrible thing to me. There's no way I can afford the money, so give up. You know what people say, that you can't give what you don't have, don't you? I'll do whatever it takes to make you pay for those, even if it takes decades, and I don't like the idea of letting you have your own way. If anything, I don't want you to be happy. I'm going to fight you with everything I've got. Be prepared. I don't know what you're going to do, but don't do anything nasty. I was both angry and annoyed at Vernon. I couldn't even understand why I had married him. Everything just went blank inside my head. But I am a mother of two children. I couldn't just stand by and watch with my fingers crossed. My son woke up from his nap and patted me worriedly on the back, bringing me back to my senses. I then proceeded with my preparations. Kelly, what does this mean? Vernon, have you returned home? Welcome home. Stop kidding me. Why is there a board that says the house is on sale, the front gate? That's because I've sold the house. Anyway, where are we going to discuss the divorce? Do you want me to book a hotel's conference room? Huh? Don't be silly. It's not the right time to book a conference room. What do you mean that you've sold the house? I don't have a home to come back to. Of course not. You don't have a place to come back to. That house is for my family. You sold it without my permission. Vernon, listen to me. Have you forgotten about that house? Seven years ago, when we bought the house. Seven years ago? I don't understand. You bought the house in my name because I had more money saved up and because it was easier to get approved for a loan since I work for the government, right? What I do with what's in my name is up to me, isn't it? I just sold my own house on my own. Do you have a problem with that? That's too selfish. We lived together after we bought it, and we should discuss it. You took the liberty of going overseas to a new place, got a new girlfriend, and even have a child. And then, when you come back, you ask me to move out of the house because you're bringing her back with you? That's selfish! What about the division of property? I'm paying the mortgage too, so I should be entitled to it. I checked with my lawyer and I'm properly following the law. Because you clearly stated on the line 
that you have no intention of paying alimony and child support. You made a serious mistake. Mistake? Don't tell me you sold the house for the alimony and child support. The mortgage you were paying was not enough for alimony and child support. I'll be sure to bill you for the rest. Through my lawyer, of course. Where are you guys? There's no way I'm telling you that. You need to ask my lawyer. Besides, I don't want you coming to see me and the kids. You're having so much fun taking away my place of refuge. You're the worst kind of person. How dare you? You sounded so happy when you tried to kick us out of the house. Did you have fun making a local wife, even though you were still married to me? Did you enjoy living with your local wife and daughter there? Well, that's... That's what you deserve, so you'd better accept the bitter fact. We need to discuss the divorce first. Can you come to my lawyer's office? Lawyer's office? Yes, the office is in the front of the nearest station of your workplace. When you come, we'll talk about the divorce and the rest of the money. Of course, with my lawyer whom I can trust. Don't think you'll get away with this. Oh, and by the way, I'll call your company too. What? Why? The company has nothing to do with it. Because you cheated on your wife while you were away from home and were getting a divorce. You're not family anymore, so there will be a lot of procedures at the company. I don't know who the other party is yet, but if it's a co-worker in Singapore or something, it's just too much. It can't be helped. I met the love of my life. I don't care about the company. I just want to make the woman I love happy. Was it really a co-worker of yours? A woman who worked there, in the same company, and she didn't know that you were married? That's strange, isn't it? Singapore is one of the biggest cities in the world, and there are a lot of people there. I mean, they don't even check if I'm married or not, so... I'm sorry. I still need to contact the company. I'd better talk to the company about that in detail. Wait a minute. If you do that, not only me, but she could lose her job too. She didn't know you were married, did she? Then she's a victim. I'm sure she'll be fine. If anything, she's in the same boat as me. I told her that I'm a married man after a while. Oh, wow. I'm stunned. So then she knows now, right? She saw my messages with you. That's how she found out. But she still said she loves me and that we should get married and live together in the U.S. She said she loves me. Looks like I've got more money to charge for alimony. I don't know her contact information indeed, so I still have to tell the company. I'll have my lawyer go through the company and talk to her about the fee. Our daughter is still young, for God's sake. Please don't do that. How dare you talk to me like that? Even our kids are still very young, seven and five years old. At this point in time, you're so busy talking about your girlfriend and daughter in Singapore that you don't even worry about Kate and Kyle. You are such a selfish man. We've been apart for three years anyway. That's not the point, is it? They are your children. Anyway, please come to the lawyer's office. We'll talk about all this. Please, don't tell the company about the affair and anything related to that. It's up to you. What do I have to do to get you not to tell them? If you and your girlfriend pay proper alimony and child support, I might reconsider. There's no way I have that much money. Then I'll just tell the company. The company triggered the problem by transferring you to Singapore in the first place. Wait a minute, Kelly. I'm sorry. I'll make sure I pay you alimony too. I'm finally back at the head office and I'm on the fast track to a big promotion. My life is just about to begin. If I fail at this point, everything I've worked for will be a waste. What does that have to do with me? Everything you're saying is only for your own reasons. You cheated on me and even have a child. You also forced me to move out of my house. You've got to be kidding me. What about the lives of our beloved children? I don't understand why you can only think about your own happiness. Don't talk to me so coldly like that. All right, I'll go to the lawyer's office right now and get down on my knees or whatever. Getting down on your knees won't change anything you've done. 
I don't even want to see that. Listen, I'm really sorry about what I've done to you. If you really feel bad, then come to the lawyer's office properly and show your sincerity in the visible form of money. That's the only way to resolve this. Okay then. Anyway, I'll be right there. So please, don't tell the company. I'll give you three more minutes. Your joke isn't funny at all, Kelly. Then I'll give you 30 minutes. Please come quickly. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be there as soon as I can. I don't know who started the rumor, but word of Vernon's affair spread quickly throughout the company. He was supposed to return to the headquarters, but he was transferred to a remote place somewhere near Seattle. Of course, there was no way that his girlfriend and child from Singapore would come to such a place, and he was easily dumped right after that. He had cheated and betrayed his wife and two children, so he deserves to be punished. I hope he will live the rest of his life reflecting on the mistakes he made. Until now, Vernon has been working alone and lonely at his new office. He sent me a letter through my lawyer telling me that he could only keep working to pay for the alimony and child support, and it's just too hard for him to bear. Of course, I ripped the letter and threw it right away to the garbage bin. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.